everybody! Kane here from Vulgar Display of Gaming, and today I'm joined with my good buddy Vincent Salazar from Arcade86. How you doing, Vincent? How you doing, Shane? Pretty good. Awesome, awesome. I just want to say, so, Arcade86, Vincent here, creator, the founder, the uh, creative art artist, he made this custom, custom alien machine, and he makes a lot more. And today I want to introduce everybody to him and his work, and we're going to go through his entire uh, career so far. So, <laughs> that sounds good. So Vincent, I want to start off by saying, can you share with us how you started this journey and what made you want to make custom arcades for people? Sure thing. I mean, uh, it's a really interesting uh, story, you know? Uh, so this uh, whole journey is began in the, in, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, I was going through a very rough time. Uh, I, I just recently got fired from work. Uh, I was depressed. I was going to a very low uh, of my own life, you know. And um, one day, you know, I I, I was just uh, sitting there in my computer, and my son was next next to me uh, playing video games. I don't remember exactly what he was playing. It, it could it be Battlefront or uh, Call of Duty. I don't re really recall. But uh, the graphics they were super amazing, you know. And I turn around and I look at him and see uh, and and seeing in, in him how much he was enjoying playing those games, uh, that make me remind uh, remind me how much I enjoyed playing video games when I was growing up and when I was a kid, you know. And since I was going through very rough times, you know, I start to think about all those wonder years. And I start thinking, you know, that back then I didn't have no responsibilities. I didn't have to pay bills. I didn't have to do pretty much anything, you know. <laughs> right. I just going to school and, and enjoy the, uh, my, my life, you know, going and out and playing, you know. Uh, so I turn around and say to my uh, to my son, you know what? Uh, one day either I'm gonna buy you one of these machines or I'm gonna build you one. I did it. I, I say that sarcastically because obviously I didn't know that there was a way to actually do an arcade machine. You know, so he went to bed. I stay late. You know, like around two, three o'clock in the morning, uh, googling stuff. You know, and and I I start to to be curious about one of these machines, how much they go for, and, and how uh, how difficult it will be to have access to something like that. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I really thought that uh, somebody that can own one of these machines could, should be rich, you know, uh, totally out of my ball game. Yeah. But um, then I started looking around and I see that the prices were like uh, not that that bad, you know. But I mean, they were affordable, you know, for somebody actually be able to buy one of those things. But then I got across on something else, you know. There was the uh, emulation, the DIY, doing yourselves the kind of thing, you know, and uh, and I, it, that opened a, a totally different world for me, you know, because I realized that there was a way for me to actually play all those games that I grew up with uh, in my computer. But uh, that motivated me a lot, you know, to start thinking about how to, to, uh, to make that promise happen. And, and the next day I woke up and I, the first thing that I, uh, I, I started doing was looking around in the house for materials to build that uh, that ma machine that I told my kid I was going to build him. You know, I, I remember that I had one of those plug and play uh, uh, games. Remember those? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that have the cores for RC uh, plugs uh, for uh, CRT uh, monitors. And uh, I remember it was one of my favorite games. It was Mortal Kombat. So I have that and I started, you know, looking around the, the house, you know, trying to figure out the way to make that ar a little arcade happen, you know. Uh, I found a few things, uh, a few boards, particle boards, and, and, and back then I didn't have no power tools. Mm. Uh, I was not that kind of guy, you know, like uh, I was it, into this graphic. Is, this is carpentry as well. It is, you know, and, <laughs> and that's an, a, a, a really interesting story of, about how I learned how to do carpentry, but I probably we jump into that later on. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that, you know, I, uh, I didn't have no power tools because back then, you know, my, that, that puff, the type of work that I used to do, it was more requiring me for me to dress well, to uh, be all clean up and stuff, you know. And so you were a graphic design artist. Yeah, right? I was yeah. a graphic designer, and uh, and that's the reason, you know, what I didn't have no power tools, you know. Like uh, it was a crime for me. <laughs> but um, uh, I found one of those hand saws uh -huh. and some nails, uh, um, hammer. Uh, I even used the uh, the glue that the, the, my kids used to go uh, use for school. And I start, you know, doing my layout, start cutting, and start uh, doing a mess. This is this all this thing happened in the <laughs> living room of my house, and I had carpet. 
So my wife, she was like, uh, uh, you know, screaming all the time, you know, like, oh, you're doing all this. What, what can you not do in it outside, you know? So oh, anyways, you know, I started to cut in the, the layout of my arcade and start to to um, disassemble the whole uh, uh, plug and play controller. And I start to realize, you know, that the, I, I need to extend the cables and I start to take off the buttons and stuff. I have to be very careful because all these uh, things are manufactured in China. So they're very, very uh, easy for you to pull something and disassemble it. And back then, I didn't have no uh, soldering iron or anything like that. So I, I could have been in trouble, you know, if I, mm -hmm. I would have done it with careful. Uh, so I found one of those uh, TVs for uh, uh, for a car that I have somewhere in there. So I use it as a monitor. So I, I don't know, not, not making the, the story uh, too long, you know, I end up building a, a, a little mini uh, Mortal Kombat arcade. And uh, the next day, you know, like I probably spent like I, about three or four days. On it's it. the original arcade one, right? Correct. <laughs> they you know, stole, I, I, I probably they stole your idea. I probably was uh, <laughs> the first one that came up with something like that, you know. Uh, now that I think about it, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was a, a 12 inch, uh, a 12 inch um, high uh, mini arcade that I built, and um, uh, and then what I did uh, with that is um, uh, give it to my kids, you know, and they were like super happy, you know. But you know, the interesting thing is that in that moment, I feel so useful. I feel that I was doing something that even though I didn't have a, a, a job. You know, I, I was uh, being productive and I was uh, feeling that I was useful, you know, and that was uh, kind of like a, I took it as a therapy, you know, in the meantime that, yeah. I, you know, so I, I I got this crazy idea to start looking on, on swag meets to get one of those, uh, one, uh, some of those uh, controllers, five, five games, I think mm -hmm. they come in one of those uh, systems. And I start making um, more arcades, you know, so I end up doing like around 12 mini arcades with the oh, arc my yeah. my nice. favorite ones you nice know? and uh well they, they, they were su super fun you know to be uh <laughs> doing something that i enjoy doing but one day my wife you know she came over and she saw all the little mini arcades in the living room and she was like yeah they're super cute but you can't have them right it's here, a production know? line yeah i know man <laughs> so no. what i so it, going on about that, how you just started just doing all of this from your living room. Now you're in a warehouse, full on production. Sure. So I want to talk more about how do you even go about now? You have more of an idea. How do you go about creating a blueprint for a machine when a client comes to you? How do they want their machine built? Do you have an already? OK, I have a set template or how do you go about that? Well, the, the thing is that. Uh, since I already have, uh, since I, I was a graphic designer before, you know, I have all this experience of now uh, learning how to read my clients and how to, to know what they uh, uh, they expect from from uh, a particular type of uh, work, you know. So what I did is, um, what I do normally is get, uh, get the idea of what they're looking for, you know, probably like they're into, uh, I don't know, Star Wars or they're doing into um uh what's it called street fighter uh raiders of the lost ark uh things like that you know so they give me the theme and then i run run with my own ideas and, and i start teaching them the uh what i think uh, their arcade can look you know so I, that's where my creativity uh, kicks in and, and that's what i i design things that they're uh super unique and what I try to do is get my client involved in the whole in the whole process, mm -hmm. just like you did with this arcade. Yes, you know? yes, yes. I get your idea, what things that you like, the things that you expect, and I throw you a few, uh, you know, ideas if you want to roll with them. Yeah, you were throwing out sketches, stuff like that. Exactly, and, and from there, you know, I mean, it can get super crazy, you know, because <laughs> like uh, it could be something simple, something clean. And it could be something like this, you know, that yeah, uh, we, we like just went overboard. A little one-to-one -one scale alien on top where, you know, also some probably pictures of the whole back end of it and everything, as well as there's a whole alien egg with a face hugger down here and a fog machine built into it as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can go crazy with things like this, you know, because, uh, I mean, the, the thing is that uh, when you, when you uh, get challenged with something, you know, I, I think that there's nothing that it can be that it cannot be done you know it's just the, the matter of you trying to put yourself into uh, actually doing it and, and try your best to, to accomplish it you know and 
I, I have a lot of wild I ideas, man. Sometimes I run checks that, that I don't know if I'm going to be able to cash, man, because <laughs> I start. You overpromise things, yeah, and you're I, like, well, this was a lot more work than I thought. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> I, I, it's something that I enjoy doing, you know. It's not uh, something that uh, I, I don't, you know, I've been unemployed for the past 10 years, you know, because what I do, I love it. You you're know? fun employed. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I, and, and one of the uh, awesome things, you know, I get to play video games every day. So Exactly. You, well, you turned your passion for art and video games all into one, and now you're creating special, unique things for everybody. Exactly. And, and that leads me to my next question. Sure. What were some of your most memorable machines you've ever made? Wow. Like, some of these must have some impact of feeling to you, definitely. you know? Definitely, definitely. I have, uh, uh, I'm probably going to uh, talk to you about the three most uh, iconic uh, arcades that I have built uh, that have a lot of uh, value to me. One is this one, you know, because it has a lot of, of me, you know. I, I, this arcade, I remember telling you that I, I, my father was, uh, uh, before he passed away, he, he loved this, uh, this uh, um, iconic movies, you know. And I always thought, you know, one day I'm going to build this. And I pitched you the idea and you say, you know, roll with it because it sounds really cool. Yeah, I just uh, said, hey, I want an alien machine. You do it however yeah. you want. And boy, did he fucking deliver it. Yeah, so that this is one. The other one it will be uh, a, a, a machine that I did. Uh, it's called MTV Machine, yeah, and yeah, it has a lot of uh, sentimental value to me because uh, it, uh, it brought me back when I was building that machine. Particularly, it brought me back to the '80s, you know, because all the elements of every single thing. The best era, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, it, it, music, fashion, uh, all that nostalgia was uh, uh, like right there in the open man. and every time that i turn out the machine in the mornings you know to to keep the working and all, all, all other aspects they had like their own music uh, their own uh, i have one tv on the side of the uh, of the machine of the arcade that it was looping two hours of uh, of the first program of mtv yeah you know? that's awesome and so i i i learned by <laughs> i learned the whole the whole sequence <laughs> of, of uh, commercials and and uh and, and the video video and editing that. right there exactly. too <laughs> so i had a i had that in my mind so every time i i, I uh listen to to something related to that it reminds me of that machine uh uh the other one that it will be uh, one of the arcades that i enjoy doing the most i guess is uh, goonies arcade oh Funny yeah thing, that yeah. one was awesome that was a really awesome uh uh, uh thing that i did because uh I got contact by somebody, you know, that uh, it, it was called Jeff, right? So he, he is giving me his name, Jeff, and he shows up uh, at my shop, and he asked me if I can build him in a Goonies arcade. So I didn't recognize him or anything, you know? <laughs> so I start talking to him like normal, and I guess he got a little uh, uh, curious about knowing why you didn't recognize me if I'm... <laughs> somebody famous you know uh, he told me you know like hey Vince do you know who I am I say no I say uh, well I'm my, my name is Jeff Cohen I'm Chunk from the Goonies <laughs> I say wow <laughs> you know I that, that uh, it brought me like a big surprise you know because I obviously you know I grew up with that movie you know I grew up uh, uh, at the same time the Goonies were uh, out there I, I was hanging with that's my friends that's a great movie you know? that's oh, a great definitely. movie <laughs> that's what we were in, in the 80s that we, that we were uh, outside kids you know? yeah so the, I, I, I totally relate to the whole story and everything you know? so I started building him that, uh, uh, knowing him then you know knowing what, who, he, who he was not because he was famous I was going to do uh, uh, you know like more work or anything no I, I, I just got more inspired, inspired on, on all the things that remind me of that uh, particular movie you know so I did something like super uh, super cool you know with all the elements that he liked and everything you know I, I created something that I think one of my best works and one day, you know, funny story, he shows up with Keith Juan <laughs> to my shop. Data. That's data right there. And he compliments me and he told me that I was an artist and this and that, you know, like uh, super cool. Uh, nice guys. dude, right? Well, yeah, both of them, you know. And uh, we end up playing video games all the morning, you know, like right there in, in there uh, in, in his uh, arcade that I, I was building for him, you know. So we give him a test drive and... How cool is that? You know that you're playing with two uh, of the Goonies in, in your in your own uh, place. You know, 
Uh, th those things that, you know, they're... doesn't happen every day, yeah. as well as an Oscar winner in your place, too. Yeah, and now <laughs> he's an Oscar winner. Can you imagine how hard it would be for me to actually bring him in and, and, and spend uh, some time in my shop? But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, uh, uh, after that, I, I, I started, uh, you know, um, having a really good relationship with, uh, with uh, Jeff, and uh, he's our awesome person you know like i always thought you know that keanu reeves is a good really good person down to her and everything but jeff doesn't have nothing to ask for <laughs> no, he's a really really good person you know i know and uh i guess that answers my next question already sure. i guess that answers my next question already sure. what's your most memorable story from working on a, a project with a client I, and that's I think that's that it, it. <laughs> I think that, that will be the one yeah so yeah. what do you so again you're inspired by the 80s you're inspired by all these iconic movies what about some of the, your favorite arcade games growing up you grew up in the the, the prime era of seeing yeah. video games take shape take form like that must have been exciting a new game coming out oh they've got this machine at the arcade this oh, week it, it was crazy man because uh, i mean i i am a 52 year old guy you know so i i'm i was there when everything started you know pong when uh, uh, Atari 2600 came out, I went through uh, Atari's, Coleco's, Intellivisions, uh, Nintendo's. I always been a gamer, you know, and uh, I think that's one of the things that uh, made me appreciate all this uh, uh, system and games. You know, I, I uh, th 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 what I always tell my customers is that what I do uh, is pretty much providing the frame to some beautiful piece of art, because that's what it, w what what. All the, the work that all these programmers put into it mm -hmm. is a lot of imagination, a lot of uh, art uh, into making a lot of people happy. And I'm just providing a new way to, to look at uh, all those retro uh, games, you know. Because right now, you know, yeah, there's a lot of uh, really cool uh, uh, games and stuff like that. But I mean, uh, for some reason, uh, the, the that was the start of it all. That's, that's where do you think all these games got their, you know, inspiration from? And that's the thing too. Some um, people don't find uh, video games as a form of art, but it, it from the graphic design, from the way it's played, and the storytelling, as well as the music, it's all art rolled Everything. into one. Yeah. yeah even even the, the 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 way they used to do the the, the boxes, you know. I mean, you the, see artwork all the artwork. artwork yeah. Uh, for Atari, you know, like uh, I was telling you the other day, you know, like uh, you can see how much talent it was put in there just for you to be able to buy something. I, I used to buy a lot of games <laughs> just based, just on, based the on the art. And, and when I just like got it. the thing, I was just two sticks and a little... <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is kind of a letdown. Yeah, <laughs> it was, you know. But I mean, at least, you know, you, 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 you were hoping, you know, for for something like that cool actually be able to, to uh, be replicated in, in, into the real uh, system, you know. But man, I mean, uh, growing up in, on all those things, you know, it makes you appreciate uh, mm -hmm. all, all this um, uh, technology even more. Well, you of know? course, it, you like I said, you were there from ground zero from day one, seeing these games being built up, exactly. and you understand how hard these games are to make now that you're doing the carpentry, you're building all of these. Back then, they were at assembly line, but you're doing them uh, all yourself. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, that just brings me to your, this question of. Have you ever taken on something so ambitious where you, like you were saying, you oversold what you could do to where, like, wow, this is way too much work, and I, I just want to quit. I can't do this anymore. Well, you know, the good thing about about me is that it's very hard for me to quit mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. You know, if I uh, put my hand, uh, my head into an idea, I don't know. I, I, I always trying to figure out the way to to solve that. You know. I guess it's, it's just my generation, you know. I'm Generation <laughs> X. Yeah, yeah, We're thanks. not the type of guys, you know, that... <laughs> Me, I'd be like, nope, fuck this. I'm done with this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, even when we were growing up, you know, like uh, you, you got uh, your car got uh, stuck in, uh, or, or broke down, you know, for some reason. You didn't have a cell phone to call somebody to come and pick you up. You, you had to, get, to you solve the problem right yourself. there and then, you know. <laughs> I remember um, one time something uh, in my car uh, it was a fuse or something like that that uh, that uh, uh, got blown up and my car didn't didn't, didn't run or anything didn't start so I was on the, on the, on the floor looking around <laughs> for a little piece of metal so I can just uh, feel like put a bridge on it you know but that's what's what I'm saying you you were solving problems as you go 
You know, so you apply that same MacGyver kind of attitude yeah. to you when I, you're I making machines. Of, <laughs> I think that most of our generation, we have a MacGyver, my MacGyver my inside of us because we always, you know, figure out the way to solve things, you know, solve problems. Uh, I see now uh, in, in, in newer generations, you know, uh, if it's too hard, it's too complicated, uh, we'll just give up or, or just uh, move on with something that is easier, you know. And back then, we didn't have that choice, you know? Well, thanks. Now you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> you're offending me. And now this is over. So thanks. No. <laughs> no, but so I guess, I guess that answers my question. You never give up. No matter what, if you got it. I know with some of the things I've had you uh, commission and do for me, uh, you've hit little roadblocks here and there. And you've just been, you've communicated with me. You said, hey, I need some more time on this. Correct. But you never did give up. No, uh, and you uh, always that's, solved it. So. That's, the, that's the thing, you know. Like uh, you always have to figure out the way to uh, do things, and there's al always one way to do. Uh, I mean, there's more than one way to do something. Uh, the way I think and the way the way my mind works is that I think that everything is possible in this world, even gravitation, even tele teletransportation, even uh, going back in time. I think all that is possible, but we haven't figured it out yet. That's the only thing. The only th thing is that we haven't figured it out. Now, if we go back to my, my time in the 80s, if somebody would have told me, you know what, you're going to have a cell phone, you're going to have computers, touch screens. Right. What are you talking saying, about? You know, come on. That, that's <laughs> that's, that's going to be like in 50 that's years, not future, 20 years, 30 yeah, years. Exactly. So, yeah, you've seen and, all of this stuff, and it just blows you away. And, and you're now, like, oh. now you, you see all the things that we thought it was going to be impossible to do. Mm -hmm. They're possible. They're everyday things. They're things that we have access to in uh in a regular basis you know and we everything see it, so come you yeah you know, can you imagine all the uh people having a, a camera mm -hmm. they have an uh they ha you have the uh, whole world's uh information yes. in your pocket now exactly. <laughs> you know? so how crazy is that you know so uh, if you, you would tell all these things that we have right now if you go back in time you know, in the beginning of the 1800s, and you explain all the things that we do. They would they call would, you a witch. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they would burn you. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, so with all of this stuff, your ambi amb ambitious project taking yeah. and the way you've presented these machines and how you're going about doing them, would you like to talk about some of the other cool collaborations you've done just because people saw your work and saw handy, how handy you were, oh, such definitely. as I know you've done work for Arcade 1-Up sure. as well as uh, Replicate from New Wave Toys. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, uh, with 1-Up um, with Arcade, you know, I have a, a, a very a very close friend. His, his name is uh, Andres Quiroz. And I met him when he was working on DPD, a uh, uh, place that they used to sell controllers, the afterglows and all that kind of stuff. I met him over there and then... Uh, you know, I've been working with him, doing prototypes for him. So he was working for One Up Arcade, and he asked me to help out, you know, to start doing prototypes for him. Uh, and eventually I got in uh, doing the prototypes for One Up Arcade. You know, so all the, there's a lot of things that uh, I did for them that uh, now they're accessible for everybody. So you built the mock scale models for them to see if it was uh, exactly. if it made you know, sense. Right they the, give you the you hardware, know. or they give you the software, and you just put it all together. Correct. I mean, they they just tell me, okay, we we we're gonna do like uh, the trunk, mm -hmm. okay, or we're gonna do the uh, what's it called, the Star Wars one, or or things like that, you know. And I have to put decals, make it presentable, uh, uh, figure out how to do the. The, the controllers and stuff to replicate what it was in the back of the day. Not to mention that because of one up arcade, uh, I was able to uh, build a 16 foot arcade machine for the oh, E3. Yeah. Uh, that, that was Evo. Uh, right? It was Evo and yeah. also it oh, was E3. E3 that's yeah. right. And then after that, I think they went to New York and I, that, uh, I think that was the last time that they uh, they used that arcade because. Uh, put them together and assembled. That assembled. thing was huge. Yeah, it was it, it was super super uh, huge, man. But uh, I was able to do that, man. And and uh, it was a challenge because uh, it was not just a big uh, sixteen foot arcade. It was uh, putting graphics on it, putting yeah. making a ladder for people <laughs> can walk in from one side and, and come walk out, out the, the other side. side. Yeah. And, uh, That's yeah. not easy to put together, and you had to build it outside pretty much. Yeah, well, I have a, <laughs> a, I have a big help from from a, a very good friend, uh, David. 
and uh, and we have uh, other other people collaborating with us, you know, trying to help us out. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a very uh, very interesting project, you know. I, I I never thought I was gonna be uh, doable, not because of how complex it was, because of the frame time. Mm. I only have a month. Oh, to do that. geez, you only had a month to do that? Yeah. <laughs> so can you imagine, you know, like uh, designing the big buttons, make happen to see how they were gonna work? Because this this was a 16 foot arcade that it was operational. You know, it was. Uh, it wasn't play. just for show. You no, can actually, you actually play. Actually, play with it. Like mm. It was a two player. You know, I, I remember. Uh, uh, I think even Shaquille uh, and played one of those um, uh, machines. Uh, I mean, that's probably his size. I mean, uh, most likely, you know, I think that it was like the right, the right size for, for us. We're like this. I mean, he could probably hit those buttons a lot better yeah, for than sure. we could. And uh, yeah, then, then it was for E3 2019. And, and uh, it was Marvel vs. Capcom, right? Marvel vs. Capcom. Or no, Marvel vs. Marvel Super Heroes vs. Super Heroes, right? The first oh, yeah, one. That's true, that's true. It yeah, was the yeah, first one. It was the first one. Marvel no, that was, still, that was still cool. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was. I mean, very entertaining, you know, people loved it. I, I, Think that there was a lot of really good reviews for for that machine, you know, and, and uh, they were. You know, that's one of the collaborations that I did with them. And now uh, my, my my friend uh, that I have in common, uh, uh, Andres, also he started a, a business with uh, other other uh, uh, friends, you know, uh, Shiloh and uh, it was um, uh, what's it called, uh, Peter and and uh, uh, Aaron uh, and. Uh, they, they were uh, uh, thinking about building mini arcades, you know. Uh, oh, at, yeah. at the beginning, it was not going to be mini arcades. It was there, they were going to be mini pinball machines. Mini pinball machines. Yeah. That sounds really complicated. Yeah. So <laughs> can you imagine if, uh, uh, you know, because right now, I mean, they, they totally nail it. You know, like, they're super cool. I mean, I think that is, uh, that's one of the products that everybody should have in their house. Really? Well, uh, I love pinball, but pinball is very expensive. Well, not not, <laughs> not about pinball. I'm talking about the mini arcades that they build. You know? Oh, is this uh, for New Wave? New Wave Toys. Oh, okay, yeah. so now you're talking about New Wave so Toys. So in the in the beginning, I helped them out with uh, doing the the, the prototypes. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a few mm-hmm. uh, collaborations with them. You know, trying to help them out. You know, because I mean they're they're really uh, good friends. You know, I really uh, appreciate their their friendships, and uh, I, I always you know love to. Uh, help them out in any way I can, can you know. So, uh, like I'm saying, you know, when, when they started, they're thinking uh, they were thinking about the, doing a what's one six scale pinball machines, you know. And later on, I, I guess it was not the right time to do, to do something like that. Uh, and then they jump into the mini arcades one six scale, and uh, and they, they're they're beautiful, man. I mean, right now they're uh, the latest one that I did. I think is. Uh, uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, oh, yeah, that. Ghosts and Goblins. That thing, you literally have to put little coins on it. To yeah, they're really there. cool, and, and they made even little... I saw they even had the little uh, uh, vending machine. Exactly, man. They're, they're coming out with the Coke <laughs> uh, vending machine. Uh, they're so hard, you know. They're, they're the one well, you have teller. the entire you have the entire collection oh, of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're I great. Have, I have to, man. Yeah, everybody mean, check out Replicate, uh, you know, New yeah. Wave Toys. Their stuff is really cool. All the little mini arcades and everything. Yeah, I want to get a few yeah. myself, too. I like the... Okay, uh, I want to get the Dragon's Lair one. Oh, that, that one's very really cool because they they also have like the little uh, in the back. You can actually pull up a little uh, uh, opening uh, a door, and inside. Oh, it has a laser display. It has a laser display, and then you open the laser display, <laughs> and it <laughs> and has a little CD. Yeah, that's. And it that's has the remote awesome. control and, and and coins and you know like they're they're really. Uh, Went all, all the way super uh, detailed detail down to that. all those little things. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. And, and you know, people like me appreciate those things you know? mm-hmm. because I mean, there's products out there, you know, that they are like uh, mini arcades, you know, that you can play with them, probably uh, more comfortable. But these are so detailed, these are, are all plastic and stuff items. like that, you know. Items. Collector yeah. items. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's yeah. a tabletop nostalgia. Exactly. <laughs> but the thing is that, you know, they nail it uh, until even the scale, you know, because mm-hmm. I have all of them, you know, they... Uh, in, in, in they all don't look weird no, scale. No, They're all scaled it, correctly. You turn it on, all of them, and you yeah. can hear the noise, man. Yeah. It uh, brings you back to a real arcade place, you know? No, that's and awesome. I guess that's the one of the things that I enjoy the most, uh, listening to it uh, when I... I get to the shop in the mornings. I turn up everything, and then all my arcades turns on, and I start listening to how uh, the 
the sounds. The well, you built a little. I saw your uh, little diorama you had, and then you went to <laughs> Marty McFly in there playing all the games. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's pretty sure. cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's still a lot of things, you know. That, so, uh, so with now all of your experience from st no experience of carpentry, no experience in programming these. What would you say to somebody who's just watching this and would want to be like, you know what? If he did it, I want to build my own custom arcade cab. How would you go about just telling them to start off with that? Well, Easiest way. I think that, uh, you know, like uh, everybody has uh, uh, different, uh, I don't know, I guess like uh, limitations and things. Mm -hmm. But also they have a lot of uh, things that they can, that they're really good at, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, for some reason, I, I I always been very creative and very uh, handy with uh, you know doing things, you know. And uh, but I think that the most important thing is that you have the will to do things. Mm -hmm. that yeah. You want to perseverance. Do perseverance. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That that that. Uh, I think we all have the same capacity. We are all human beings. We all have the same brain, legs, arms. You know, like uh, our we're built the same. You know, so. The only thing you know that makes you uh, be uh, part of, of of somebody that makes something is just that that person actually tried it and mm -hmm. actually went for it, you know, and actually tried to to accomplish something that they wanted to do. So you, I, I think that if you want to do something, you just really need to really want needed to want it really bad to do it, you know, uh, because if it's something that you just want to do and and you don't really have that motivation and Probably you're never gonna do it. Yeah, you're like you're always gonna have it in your head, but you're never gonna. No, exactly, exactly. But you don't know. I'm pretty sure you went and started looking at like cabinet dimensions. Like, all right, how big are these? Stuff like exactly. that. And then what are the basic tools I need? So would you just say, hey, if you were really inspired in this, maybe go pick something up off a of Craigslist, an old arcade machine. Start with restoring it first, possibly. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, you you can learn. Uh, a lot from restoring, you know. I did a lot of restorations myself. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I did yeah, a lot of refurbishing. Uh, my Neo Geo right here. Oh, did. there you go. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of uh, refurbishing that mm -hmm. I did. You know, it was funny thing, uh, funny story is that I end up having like around probably like about ten original arcade machines, and the reason why was that a lot of people wanted to have multi arcades, you know, with uh, thousands of games. And they come up uh, to my shop with this in perfect condition arcades yeah and they want me to modify them and, and yeah it's a travesty no keep I, those I the so same <laughs> uh, yeah I, 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 i'll build you something hold on let me keep this i'll build you something new. exactly you know, <laughs> I, I used to take them as part of, of the payment and i say you know what i build you whatever you want you know just don't destroy this you know because mm -hmm. this is part of history this is yeah. something that it yeah. has a lot of meaning for people of, of my generation you know so uh, we wish sometimes, you know, that we can pass along this type of technology also to newer generations, and and, pe and, and kids can enjoy the uh, same things that we used to enjoy when we were growing up. So that's the reason why I, I preserve those machines. You know, I still have a few of them in my in my shop. Uh, but yeah, man, I mean, um, it, it's not a, nothing impossible to do. You know, like only the, the impossibles that are in your head. You know, you, you if you want to do something, yeah. You, I mean, I. I like a, a life example of somebody that started with nothing, with nothing, literally nothing. And you just went from Googling stuff, finding stuff around the house, and then plug and play stuff. So I guess a, a good entry point for people if they wanted to start doing something like this is getting those like little Raspberry Pis, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, there's those a lot little of kids kits. that they yeah. sell and stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, if you ever, guys, you know, somebody really wants to get into these things and they want to contact me, I'm super happy to help out, you know, giving you pointers and stuff like that, you know, because I enjoy doing this, you know, and then I, I, I you know. Um, yeah, we'll definitely do some, like, kind of video tutorial things. That'd be cool, yeah, for sure. you mean, know. I, th those are things, you know, like, there's a lot of things that I wanted to do, jump into doing, but I know my limitations, you know, mm -hmm, I, re mm -hmm. I really suck and talking to the camera or talking to I think you're all right like here. I think we're doing pretty good, right, guys? Everybody leave a comment below and say if Vincent's doing a good job. Uh, try, try my best. I, I guess I, I feel very comfortable with you, you know, because it's like we're having a conversation like a, like a re every day. Yeah, I've known you for a, a few years now. Yeah, man. I mean, wow. I think, uh, uh, we've been, uh, been I think like 2014 or 13. No, maybe 15. 2015. 
around there yet. Yeah, I don't know. It's been good, a while. Good seven, you, good seven or yeah, eight you've years. Done a few machines for me now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and that uh, that's one of the things that I enjoy about my 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 work as well is that not only not only uh, there are two things, <laughs> two things that I enjoy the the most about my work. One is that when I build something, you know, uh, that I, I I create for some some customer. I get to meet the inner mm -hmm. child when he goes and pick up his arcade or when I deliver his arcade. You can't see there, you know, like I, that's when I, I, I get mm -hmm. the opportunity to meet the inner child, you know, and see how they were when they were kids, you know, because they, that excitement, that, uh, that the way they look at the, uh, at the machine, the way they, they start uh, having that nostalgia. It's like I, I'm building not an arcade machine, I'm building a time machine. They go back yeah, you're and taking them back. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and the other thing is that I I, I had the opportunity to meet so many people mm -hmm. from all walks of life. You've met celebrities. Definitely. You've met a lot of people. A lot. You know? <laughs> and yeah. then you wind up here on this YouTube channel that's exactly <laughs> no yeah. one famous, but <laughs> no. I mean, I, I think that that you know, like we all start with uh, something that we are passionate about. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that make me have. Uh, some kind of a, a success and I, I will explain the success in a little uh, <laughs> but what makes me feel that I have a little success is because I lo I, I'm doing what I love and mm -hmm. I show up every day every day I don't have no days off at, at this point it's not a job anymore you just enjoy I doing just enjoy, do, yeah. enjoy doing it you know it's something that it, it makes me feel good you know and by uh, going back to the success part I think that everybody has different levels of success depending on what they're pursuing. You know, some people they look for fame. That some people they look for richness. Uh, so some people they like to look for a lot of things. You know, but I mean, when you actually finally find a spot that you're happy with, mm -hmm. you know, and that you can um, uh, uh, share that energy, that, that light to everybody around you, I, I think that, that that's what we all always. Uh, to look for you know? and that's what you do through your work like you said these people they relive their childhood and every time i know when i turn this on i love aliens that's one of my favorite movies sure. you know i sit there and just think about this as well as like there's custom videos playing here just the entire thing is an experience every time i play this machine and, and that's one of the things that i i try to do is uh i mean by the way i only made one of ones you know yeah, like, pretty I, much, I will never yeah. repeat this, this yeah. project again. Yeah. It was a nightmare. <laughs> I was not doing it. <laughs> this, yeah, this was uh, one of those machines where you're just like, oh, this was a lot. <laughs> well, the thing is that, you know, I, I try to do, uh, I see my, my work in, in a different way. You know, I, there's people that they they do this. Um, Again, arcade. it's art. It's art. Yeah. One of well, ones. It's, it's, yeah. It's art, you're not you know? going to, you're not going to mass produce this. No. You're yeah. going to make this for me and you're going to be like, here's your design. If somebody wants another alien machine, you're going to do something totally different Correct. for them. And I, I have done that. Yeah. You know, I have like, I have built like about three or four different Star Wars machines. Yeah. And they're all I, different. Uh, and they're all, all different. You know, I never, uh, I, I probably take a few, a few, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, um, uh, templates examples you're like hey i can the, reuse uh, this this is a good design idea well, things that going the, here the customer like yeah you know? like, yes. uh, there's a, obviously customers that say you know i love that machine you know mm -hmm. i would love to have something like that you know can you make it again for me so, well i can do something similar, different yeah but different you know? yeah just let me know what are the just elements. so yours stands out more yeah just let me know what are the elements that you like the most on this arcade mm -hmm. so i can try to include them so it, it have the same elements but it looks totally different you know so yeah, I mean I, that, that's how, how how I work. You know, I, I don't mass produce. I don't have nope, this stuff, nope. and that's the the the, the beauty about, about my work because I, I I take it as more as a, a, a part of a, a doing art, you know. And uh, and you know, so, uh, sometimes sometimes you find art in the, the most crazy <laughs> places, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, again, looking at some of the machines you've done, they're just that's art all the way through from the way. You have it set up to the menu when you turn it on, to the sides of the cabinet, to everything, little custom pieces, custom touches you put on there. So, again, with talking about all these arcades, we've just been talking about arcades, arcades, arcades. Yeah. But nowadays, they're not so prominent anymore. Mm -hmm. You still have, you know, your big machine, big places like Dave and Buster's and everything. Correct. So that comes down to uh, how do you see arcades uh, in the home console world now? How do you see, do they still play a part? 
people still want these, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a you know, right now there's uh, uh, all the people that they have access to uh, to work and stuff like that uh, are my generation. You know, mm-hmm. they still mm-hmm. are my generation. So they, there's a lot of nostalgia going on. And that's what uh, makes them all this. Come back to these and they want a custom machine. Have you seen, well, me particularly, like younger generations coming to these too? Do you get some young people every once in a while? Definitely. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of of, uh, young generations that they appreciate this type of technology, you know. Uh, Eventually, you know, I think that uh, it's going to be all totally up to us to keep it alive. Keep it alive, you know. Because this, this. For a moment, and uh, it was almost, uh, almost gone. Mm-hmm. You know, this this type of uh, technology was it was actually uh, gonna be uh, gone, and they decide you know to the people that they really appreciate this uh, technology they start coming up with the emulators and start uh, coming up for backups because there was a lot of machines that they were disappearing you know and they need to have like uh, at least a backup digital backup of, of the actual games you know to have it for mm-hmm. for. Uh, future uh, so that's where it comes into yeah. you know some people don't like roms and everything i get it; it's not original hardware but for me uh my opinion on roms is it preserves these games it preserves a legacy it preserves a history as well as i i collect original machines too yeah but roms have a special place in this in this whole thing you know yeah i mean uh, at least it's, it's something that you can have access you know obviously you're not gonna beat uh, a jamma board you know the original uh, Origin They're kind of getting board. harder and harder to find. Uh, yeah, and, and not not to mention, you know, like uh, even with CRT monitors, you know, right those, now. It's yeah, those are slim pickings. And for the, there's not that many people anymore that they can service those those monitors. And mm-hmm. they, uh, same thing that I think with everything that is is going on in the world, you know, like uh, 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 you can. Uh, there's a lot of people that they enjoy so much taking pictures with a uh, uh, 35 millimeter. Yeah, mm-hmm. now uh, the film's going away. Exactly, you know. But there's a still a, a, a very uh, small percentage of people that they love to have that collection of mm-hmm. ca- old cameras and, and still shooting with those type of, type of uh, films. And also with uh, filming, also with, uh, it's, uh, uh, what's it called, LPs, you know, like mm-hmm. the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I collect vinyls too. Yeah, I collect a bunch right? of them. So there's a lot of people that they enjoy that thing, you know, just the, the, uh, that uh, white noise that you hear when you put a, a yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's beautiful, man. I remember when I was a little kid uh, laying down in, in the, on the floor, uh, lo- looking at the the, the inserts and everything for the albums. Yeah, man, <laughs> that, that was magical. And listening to all the, the the music, you know, and those things are they're are gone, man. Right now, everything's so digital, you know. Like you, you have everything, like we were talking about. You know, everything's on the on the phones. You have access to millions of, uh, of sounds on, on Spotify or, or Pandora. Uh, you have uh, Netflix. You have all kind of stuff to, to yeah. watch movies and stuff, you know, and video games as well. So it's up to our generation mm-hmm. to teach new, ger- new generations to see. Appreciate, they appreciate where that. this this history, where this came from. And so I, again, that's, w- that's what you're doing, too. You're preserving all of this. Exactly. You're preserving the memory of these games in a newer form for us to enjoy. Correct. As well as you didn't destroy a bunch of old cabs. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. That, that would be a scene, man. Yeah. That, that would be a, a scene. But, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I, I think that I, uh, I'm i contributing to this world is uh, providing something. Uh, it, it will be harder for somebody to destroy something like this, mm-hmm. you know, because it has so much work. They see it like a, a, a mm-hmm. that uh, if it's just a plain, uh, plain uh, cabinet, with just black. the TV on it, yeah. yeah it's just if it if it goes out, I, I I'm not gonna uh, fix it, you know. Mm-hmm. Just throw them away, you know. But in this case, you know, you have a cabin like this. You you, you really want to. This is a work of art, you know, yeah. Because it has a lot of work. It, it has uh, as a decoration piece, you know. Uh, I always am looking for the to provide to my customers and to everybody that plays one of my machines. I want to provide them the same feeling that they get mm-hmm. when they go to Disneyland. You know? Yeah, that same that joy. <laughs> the feeling that you're, wow, man, I'm right the, here. This, yeah, this is magical. Cab draws you in. It's a big showpiece where people come in. When they come here, they're like, whoa, what the hell is this? There's a whole alien on top. There's You got the face hugger down there. It's like, I want to play this. Yeah. Your machines drew, draw people to them. Yeah, and and, uh, and that's that's part of uh, what, I, what I'm doing this thing. 
because I know that there's a lot of people out there that they appreciate those little things that uh, that they make a difference. Mm -hmm. you know, they make a big difference. Yeah, you pay attention to every little detail. Attention, man. Even <laughs> I, I'm getting old and, and my vision is not there too much to, uh, as, as it was in the, uh, when I was younger. But I still have the heart, you know. I still have uh, uh, That's all the you will need. to to do things like this. So again, it comes down to uh, the younger generation sucks. <laughs> we <laughs> no, give up no, too no, easily. No. <laughs> we're, we're trying no. to grow this channel, and we're gonna get canceled so fast. <laughs> no, it's all good. So Vincent, I want to say thank you for joining me in this. I hope everybody got an insight of what he does, as well as just somebody who creates art. This is a form of art, and it's going to be appreciated and enjoyed for many, many generations to come. Is there anything else you would like to add? Um, tell people where we can find you at. Uh, I'll have the links below for all of his socials, as it. well as uh, his website. And you can order custom caps anywhere in the country, right? Oh, You'll ship yeah, anywhere. I, I, I have uh, mm. even work that has gone to, uh, what's it called, to um, from New York, Miami, to... A lot of places right here in the, in the states, and uh, and I think that um, if anybody wants really wants to have one of my my uh, my uh, machines, you know, is is uh, I'm really happy to to hear the proposal, you know, to see what theme that they're thinking of, so I can create. I mean, there's a lot of things that I wanted to do, uh, still wanted to. to what, what what are some real quick so everybody can see this out here? What are some of the machines you want to build? Oh, so man. maybe somebody's oh really he's done this I want to do that yeah I really want to do probably uh, um, haunted mansion oh a haunted mansion a yeah. Disney themed arcade yeah Disney themed probably you know Alice in Wonderland and Alice or, okay some Disney or themed probably, arcades probably uh, 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 Nightmare Before Christmas that would be a good one a uh, horror a horror, horror one. theme oh yeah. with like a slasher one with like yeah. Freddy Jason so that's yeah, a cool yeah. one the Letterface and all yeah stuff, yeah man. yeah uh, something probably related to music. You know, oh, like a, a custom DDR machine? Kind of like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, as well as, oh, he's also done, uh, you know, light gun games. You've done uh, racing uh, cabs. Yes. He could do every style of arcade cabinet, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I, I don't you have You dream it, he'll build it. Yeah, that's, uh, that was, <laughs> that's, that's, his, that's my slogan. slogan. If you can dream it, I can build it. Exactly. Uh, so far, you know, I, I haven't got any challenge that I haven't been able to fulfill, you know, so far. You know, I would like to do a, a what was it called, a Lord of the Rings thing. Ooh, thing. a Lord of the Rings cab uh, would be sweet. I don't know. I mean, there's so many, so many things, man. I mean, I, I, there's a, a few of them that I already feel that uh, I was uh, happy enough to to build them. That it was like uh, the Goonies arcade, uh, the Terminator arcade that I did. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, Dallas Cowboys mm -hmm. and uh, sports. You know, I, I, I think I have uh, gone through a lot. Uh, yeah, you've done right. almost every kind of theme from sports to, but you know, a lot horror still, movies. But yeah. there's still a lot, a, a lot out there, you know, that people can come up with, you know, that and I can. So basically do. your job doesn't get boring for that, too. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, that's, I, I guess there that's you have reason, it. I guess that's the reason why I, I have been uh, doing this for so long is because I don't let it get bored. You know, I don't yeah. repeat the same thing over and over because that will, yeah, it will make me super fast doing something. But at the same time, uh, I will get super bored mm -hmm. because I know that I have to do it again and again and again, you know. In my case, you know, every single project that I do is, is completely new. Mm -hmm. And I don't even, you know, like all the programming that goes in, involved in these machines, I don't even have like a... a, a copy a thing that there is a, 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 a cloning thing that you can yeah this is every single one every it's single one is done. unique brand you know? new yeah, every brand new system brand new uh loading screen everything yeah 100 percent customized yeah yeah so again uh vincent i would like to thank you for coming in and uh oh, doing this you, interview Shane. with me and uh, again i enjoy what you've created for me i probably have more things I want done when I have the space. No, for sure. <laughs> uh, it, it was really nice uh, talking to you and, and to your viewers. I really uh, wish you good luck in, in what you're uh, putting your mind to set. To, I appreciate that. Know, I, I think we're, we're, that. We're, we're, we're still going to be around. To yeah, still... we'll, we'll, we'll be doing some more work together. Oh, we'll probably do some other cool videos of him actually building stuff. Yeah. So, or, so or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, all of his links will be down in the description below. Feel free to contact him. If you have anything you've ever wanted, a custom machine, four-player, whatever, 
he will build it. For so sure. That sounds great. From here in the Vulgar Display Gaming Studios, I'm Shane, and again, that's Vincent. Take care, everybody. Take care. Thank you.